Please welcome to the stage your host for today. Give it up for Karina LeBlanc. Guess who's back again? Oh, they don't know. Y'all tell. Oh, they don't know. Y'all tell. I bet they know as soon as we walk in. Show up. I'm wearing Cuban lips. Yeah. Design a mix. Yeah. Inglewood finest shoes. Don't look too hard. Might hurt yourself. Know to get the color red, the blue. Shit. I'm a dangerous man with some money in my pocket. Keep up. So many pretty girls around me and they're waking up the rocket. Keep Keep up. up. Why you mad? Fix your face. Ain't my fault they all be chocolate. Good morning. Ah, uh, really? Let's try that again. Good morning. All right. I love you too. You're the best. See, I love that energy. I want to see that energy all day. Welcome and good morning to the Youth Innovation Day at the BC Tech Summit. Who's excited to be here? All right, I like that. My name is Karina LeBlanc, and I don't know, how many of you guys have ever heard of the sports soccer? Hands up? Yeah. Let's put the hands up. Yeah, is it the coolest sport in the world? Yeah? Okay. So I played for Canada for 18 years, which is unfortunately older than some of you guys. But I got to kick a soccer ball for a living. I went to two Olympic Games, won a bronze medal, went to five World Cups, and had the greatest job in the world. And guess what that led me to? Talking to you guys here today. So I am excited to be here because not only have I played in soccer for Canada, the coolest country in the world, but it's led me to be here with you guys today to learn, to grow, to ask silly questions, so don't laugh at my questions, because you guys are the geniuses and I'm going to learn from you, so I'm really excited. We have a fantastic day planned for today. Today you're going to meet a bunch of amazing entrepreneurs, even some at the age of 13, who are geniuses on YouTube. You're going to go through a robotics tournament, a gamified tour of the summit. You're going to hear speakers who are super cool. You're going to listen to me all day. Who's excited for that, too? Yeah? OK, yeah. Go ahead. You can, every time I ask a question about me, just be, the answer is like, yay! OK? That's the best thing. Um, but today's about technology, technology, technology. We do you know that in BC, over 100,000 people are employed in this fast-growing sector? 100,000 people. That's equivalent to the city of Kelowna. Who here has heard of Kelowna? Yeah? Woo! Wow! There you go. Kelowna represented well. They have the coolest jobs in the sector, and everything from making video games, to rockets, to life-changing, saving medicine, to robots, supercomputers, the sky is the limit. There's endless possibilities in career, and today, hopefully, you build a passion. If you already have a passion on technology, you build it more. And if it isn't there, you, in, you, you learn to have a passion for it. Because for me, already in the back, I'm not going to tell you who I've been speaking to already, but I'm already like this, yeah. I know today, I'm going to learn, so I'm excited for you too. In fact, tech jobs, get this, pay 75% more than the average job. 75% more. I think I'm going to shift. 75% more. How awesome is that? And I'll tell you what, what's happening in tech in BC today, the career opportunities are growing. In fact, you today will see so many new ideas. And at the same time, you will grow, you will learn, and hopefully, no matter if you're a man or woman, boy or girl, you'll see the opportunities for yourself today. So, first of all, let's see. I want everybody to yell where they're from today. Go. I'm here in Kamloops. Uh, they're a little loud in the front. I'm here in Nelson. Come on down. I'm here and come on down. Are we on the prices, right? Come on down, okay. Fort St. John's, Lady Smith, Kelowna, Penticton, Surrey, Dawson Creek. That's a famous show. All right. So. Okay, so what I'm hearing from is there's a lot of cities here. And let's actually, we have people live streaming in on the internet. So on the count of three, we're gonna say, hey everybody, okay? So when I go three, two, one, we're gonna say, hey everybody in the live stream, okay? Three, two, one, hey everybody! 
All right, what's up, live stream? Anybody here from Maple Ridge? Really? No. Not, not, that's where I'm from. It's okay. We'll, 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 we'll rally it up. Well, I bring up Maple Ridge because I moved to Canada when I was eight years old. And I, if you can believe it or not, used to be the shyest kid. You could not get me to speak. So what I'm doing right here would terrify me. But what changed it for me was sport. Sport gave me a confidence. It gave me a reason to connect. Just like all of you here today, you can connect to the person next to you because you have something in common. And I'll get to talking about that a bit later. But the biggest thing is that I found my passion. I found my love. And I decided and I dared to dream big. At the point where I dreamed of women playing at the Olympics, there was no women's soccer. But I was crazy. People would walk around and be like, what do you want to be in? Like, again, I used to be the shy kid that you couldn't get to speak. Now you can't shut me up. But then people would be like, when I finally started playing, I was like, I want to be an Olympian. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because it's about you. It's about your personal passion. What ignites you? What wakes you up? What makes you be like, you know what? I want to explore that more. And that's what today is about. Finding your passion and getting that fire and lighting it and figuring out a way and everything you hear today or you see today or you do today, connecting that to your passion. Because we are all here, every single one of us, we are all here for a purpose. We are all here to do great things, not average things. We were just talking in the back. Why be average? Why be average in life? Why be average at anything? There's so many average people in the world, but guess who's here today? You are. The average person may be at home sleeping, sleeping in. This is kind of early, eh? Some of you guys are on spring break. The average person may be doing whatever they're doing, but you are not average because you are here. And I want you to feel that passion inside of you, whatever it may be. Hopefully it's tech, but whatever it is, find that passion. Dream big with it, not small. Don't have small dreams. And you'll hear from the speakers today. They, they didn't have, you have a five-year-old or a 13-year-old that age, at age five started coding. At 13, you're going to hear him speak. He's done big things. It's never too early and it's never too late. But the first thing you got to figure out is what is my passion? What was I put on this earth that is uniquely mine? We all have it. But until you ask yourself that question, you'll never know it. So, back to BC Tech. We're going to do lots of social media today, OK? Twitter, who's on Twitter? Just put up your hand. OK, cool, follow me, at Karina LeBlanc, OK? Instagram, who's on Instagram? OK, cool, follow me, at Karina LeBlanc. Snapchat, I mean, I'm going to snap it out. You guys are on, who's on Snapchat? OK, yeah, I'm going to Snapchat a little later. And uh, you guys can be on my Insta story and stuff and be like, hey, guess who I'm hanging out with? We have all these things, but make sure you hashtag BC Tech and make sure you tweet me, okay? I'm being serious. I'll actually check in between at lunch and stuff. The coolest tweet, I am retweeting. And when I say cool, I don't mean, ooh, fun day. I mean, own it. Own it. Just be like, craziest day, craziest host, rocking it out, and take some pictures with some friends and at me, OK? If you don't know how to spell my name, come on. K-A-R-I-N-A-L-E-B-L-A-N-C. No excuses, all right? And also, everyone should have downloaded the Quest app, Quest Upon app. Have you guys done that? Hopefully you have. And I'll, along with all that, there will be a scavenger hunt later, which is on the agenda today. There will be polling, which is again on this app. And we're just going to rock it out. Who's ready to rock it out? This is day two of British Columbia's biggest ever tech conference. 10 countries represented. 3,000 people are here. A third of the speakers are women. Woo! Yeah. I love that. There's a bit of a gender imbalance in tech, but you guys can make a difference. And hopefully, we can balance that out. And what better way to make a change than equal opportunity and participation in people speaking? It was just like for me, like I said, when I played soccer, literally, I had a dream of being an Olympic athlete and there was no women's soccer. I watched 
Donovan Bailey, which is probably too young for you guys. But you guys know Penny, right? Right, the swimmer? Yeah? You've watched the Olympics, and there's a moment that you watch it, and you're like, that's it for me, and that was it for me. But this is what the opportunities are growing for women, and this is so awesome. I'm sorry to talk about women. If you think there's an issue of talking about women, it's because women rock. And it's an opportunity now for it to be equal. So I'm pretty excited about this. All right, Facebook Live. You guys have heard of Facebook Live, right? Yeah? So at lunchtime, we're going to do a Facebook Live. So come up. We're gonna, it's going to be shown around the world. OK? That's how Facebook is. I want you to come up, ask questions, maybe join in Facebook Live, tweet some questions. I want you, this to be interactive because this is a tech event. And make sure you come join me so it can be like the coolest Facebook Live ever. All right. So enough about me. Let's get this party started. Uh, we are here to start things out with BC's Minister of Jobs, Tourism and Skills Training. Shirley Bond was elected as the MLA of Prince George, Vermont, and she's been more than 15 years of cabinet experience. She's the first female to hold the position of Attorney General in BC's history. That's a round of applause. A title she held while Minister of Justice. She served as a Deputy Premier. premier. She has led the number of provincial ministries as Minister of Transportation, Education, and a Minister of Health, to name a few. Please give him a warm welcome to Jobs, Tourism, and Skills Training Minister Shirley Bond. Well, good morning. I want to give a really warm welcome to everyone from across British Columbia today, and it's really fantastic to have you here. Um, I know there's some people from uh, the part of the province I represent, Prince George. Okay, where's Prince George? Oh, that's terrible. Kamloops was way louder than you. Come on, you guys. So, um, it, Karina has a, and you know what, we should give a really big shout out here to Karina. You, you can imagine the kind of leadership she's showing, not just in the sports world, but as somebody who stands up for the rights of children around the world, we're pretty lucky to have her here with us today. So give her a big shout out and a big thank you for taking her time to be with us today. So Karina's told you a little bit about why, why we want you here today, and, and this day was part of the work that I did, making sure that young people from across British Columbia got a chance to be here. And here's why. Every company today is a tech company. Doesn't matter what you do, there's some form of technology involved. And in British Columbia, we have a pretty unique problem in the country right now. We're going to see our economy continue to grow, but more than that, we're going to see people of my generation, my age, moving out of the workforce. And it's going to be a big transition for our province. We're going to have more jobs than we have people to fill them. So you are at the perfect place in your lives to be figuring out what are the paths you might want to take, what are the careers you're interested in. And we wanted to give you a chance to meet with some of the most incredible innovators, entrepreneurs. You're going to see stuff today that is amazing. And when you think about what technology has done in this world, we used to think of it as science fiction. Did you know that 3D printers today can create prosthetics? Why does that matter? That matters because children today who have need for a, 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 a limb, it's expensive. You have to replace them frequently. Think about living in a world where we can take a 3D printer and make life better for kids who need prosthetics. Think about the fact that Think about the fact, I don't know about you, but I, I have to travel a lot in my world, and, and I'm also away from my family a great deal. I could not have imagined a time in my generation where I could actually FaceTime with my grandkids or my daughter who lives and works in Australia. We're living in a world that we can't even imagine what it looks like five years from now. But we want you to make sure that you've thought of every possibility, every opportunity. And you're here today with teachers and leaders in your, your lives. So take advantage of some great opportunities today. It's also going to be really fun. Think about it. We've turned this event into a giant scavenger hunt. And through a quest upon scavenger hunt, you're going to have, I hope, a lot of fun today as well as learn a lot of, of really great stuff. 
But I have to tell you, you're going to hear for a young man, from a young man, and, and Karina referenced him. You know, you think about it, Tan May Bakshi. How many of you have gone to his YouTube site? Have any of you gone and looked? You should go take a look. I did. I wanted to see what uh, Tan May does. I can tell you what, Tan May is talking about stuff that most adults have no idea what he's talking about. And he's 13 years old. He created his first app at the age of nine, was coding at the age of four. So you get to hear from him. You're going to hear from Lane Merrifield, who has an app called Fresh Grade, and it's about making sure that parents and students and, and uh, uh, all educators can actually work together in a whole new way. So the last thing I want to say is this, and you heard Karina talk about it, and guys, I don't want to, I don't want to ignore the fact that, you know, all of you matter. But one of the big concerns I have in the tech industry today is the fact that women are underrepresented in those really important places where they make decisions and run companies and do all of those things. So today, the women in the room have a chance to feel inspired and to think about what role they can play. And when we hear that, you know, uh, one third of the speakers are women, well, you know what? It's about time that we make sure that 50% of the speakers are women and 50% of the people who are involved in companies and run organizations and lead provinces. Um, we want to make sure that women are equally re represented. So it's a real special chance for you today uh, to, to make sure you get to know uh, what the opportunities are. So have a great, great time. You're living in a, a province that is one of the leading technology clusters in the world. We have great post-secondary institutions who can give you the kinds of, of skills that you need to step up and take on a career in the tech sector. So have fun today. It's going to be fantastic. I look forward to seeing some of you around the innovation floor. And if you haven't tried out uh, augmented virtual reality or virtual reality, you get a chance to do that today. It's pretty awesome. So have a great day. Have lots of fun. Thank you for coming. And uh, enjoy this important opportunity. Thank you. Do you guys know the trick to the best high five in the world? You stared the elbow, did you know that? So if you go to give a high five to somebody and you stare at their elbow, you're gonna give the best high five because I just got the best high five from Minister Bond. So thank you, Minister Bond. I love what she talked about, how you guys are in the perfect place in your lives. Transition's a beautiful thing. I mean, I just transitioned from playing soccer, okay? Which, let me talk to you about transition. Transition isn't always the best place because there's a lot of unknown. And I'll tell you, as I told you earlier, I was this shy kid who felt unvalued. My first day, first couple days of school, I thought I had a new friend. And it was the boy at recess. And he came over to me and he asked me to hold something. And I was like, oh my god, so cool, I made a friend. And he put a firecracker in my hand and it went off. Now I moved from the Caribbean, so I didn't know what a firecracker looked like. And I remember falling to the ground at the playground and being like, why am I here? Like, why did my parents move me from completely comfortable to completely uncomfortable? I didn't fit in. I didn't really have friends. I was bullied. And I thought, like, what's the point? And then sports started. And it changed things for me. Like I told you before, I got invited to sleepovers. I got invited to things. I was the cool person all of a sudden. Because hey, I was able to put the ball in the back of the net. And I remember at that point, again, I tell you about dreaming big. And I mean crazy big. All of a sudden, I wanted to be this Olympic athlete. And people would ask. And in school, I went from like not talking to like, anybody have a dream here? I'd be like, yeah, I want to be an Olympic athlete. And people would laugh at me, be like, you're crazy. Like, what do you want to go to the Olympics for? Like, what, what sport are you going to do? Because the thing is, like, when you start talking about your dreams, it's not always people agree to it. People always don't jump on the bandwagon and be like, yeah, awesome, you can make that happen. You can do anything you want to do. Because we all know we have people in our lives who tell us, uh-uh. And I remember, I tried it for my first big team. It was the BC team. All my friends went. We all tried out. Here came the list. Everything, I see all my friends' names, boom, boom, boom. And guess whose name was off that list? Me. The person who was bold to say, I'm gonna do this. I was the only one not to make the team. And I remember being in the car crying on the way home. 
And if we have moms in the crowd, this is what my mom did. Like, I'm, I'm like, ah, <laughs> right? Embarrassed, hurt, confused. I'm like, ah. And my mom's like, it's OK, baby. I love you. Who is moms like that? Yeah? I love you. It's OK. And I'm like, ah. And my dad's like, mm. <laughs> And I'm like, dad, why are you crying with me? Daddy. And he's like, mm. And I'll never forget it. Because he turned to me and he said, are you going to make this one person determine your future? And I was like, you're mean. <laughs> you're going to be crying with me. But being cut was the best thing that ever happened to me. And when I say the best thing, I mean the best thing. Because the next year, I did 15 minutes more every single day. Before practice, after practice. Drove my parents crazy, I went to the garage. 15 minutes more. I was not old, I hadn't experienced life, but I knew I had a dream. And today I ask you, what could you give 15 minutes more today, instead of picking up the phone and scrolling, which we all do, we all know do, I do, what could you give 15 minutes more today to make your dream come true? Because I did 15 minutes more. And the next year, I went to the same field, and the coach was there with his clipboard, and he's like, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. And I tell the story like he's Santa Claus, because he's really not. He's like, ho, oh, oh. ho, And he's like, LeBlanc, you came back. I said, yeah, I did. But you told me I wasn't what you were looking for. So I walked right by that coach, and I tried it for your older, because the thing is, I gained confidence because I did the work. It wasn't other people telling me, oh, you have all the potential in the world. It was me believing it. I put the time in. I believed in me. And that's one of the most important things is that you have to start believing in yourself in something. I believed in me and I walked right by that coach, went to you're older, a year older. Because you know what, I'd started training with the boys and I'd started training with the older kids and I'm like, yeah, this is my crew. And I made that team. And I'll tell you what, months later, I got called into the full national team. And I went from my home, which had posters of my heroes on the wall, on my wall, in my bedroom, I had heroes, these soccer players, to being invited to the first big game of my career, which was Canada versus USA, driving down to Portland, getting there on the bus. And I'll tell you the embarrassing part, is when I, I went to the, when the coach was deciding, this is the team we're gonna take. I was like trying to act all cool, because by far I was the youngest kids and all the other people were older and they're like talking mortgages and stuff. And I'm like, I don't even know who I'm gonna take to prom, right? And I'm like, eh. but I was trying to act all cool. And my mom, just so you know, mom's jobs are to embarrass you your entire life. My mom's like, yeah! and I'm like, mom, keep it together. Like, I'm trying to be cool here. So we drive down to Portland, and I, the coach says to me the night before, LeBlanc, you're going to play. And I'm like, cool, yeah. So I call my mom, I'm like, mom, I'm playing. And she's like, find out how many tickets you get. So I go to her manager, I'm like, hey, how many tickets do I get? He's like, four. I'm like, sweet. I'm like, mom, how many do we need? She says, 200. <laughs> really, mom? I'm like, calm down, mom. But I'll tell you what, I'll never forget it. The national anthem playing, my name being introduced, and I was like this. Sold out stadium. And because of 15 minutes more, every day, the people who were on my wall were standing next to me. And I was playing for our country. So I tell you, 15 minutes more, what is your dream? because I went on to play for a country for 18 years. And was it all great? Absolutely not. In 2011, get this, sacrificed our lives, moved to Rome, gave up professional contracts. At this point, I'd been on the team for like, God, I don't know how many years at that point. I need to do my math. And gave up everything. The press, the media, the Canadian women's soccer team should win a medal at this World Cup. In Germany, we sacrificed everything. Opening game in front of 80,000 people playing. Woo! That tournament went by like that. And you know where Canada finished? Dead last. 
Not second to last, dead last. I will never forget it, walking off the field. Now imagine this, you're already broken, you're hurt, and a lovely TV guy comes to you live on television and says, LeBlanc, how's it feel to let your country down? Hey, buddy, you having a good day today? I was broken. I remember I was so embarrassed to come back home. I toured Germany for a while. I didn't know who I was. And within nine months, my life changed. We got a new coach, and he came in. He asked the same question I just asked you earlier. Why are you guys here? And for me, it had been so clear for so long. Like, how are you not inspired to play for your country? But when you're broken, you're broken. And I didn't know the answer. And then all of a sudden, it started coming together. You want to know why? It was for you guys. It was to inspire a generation so that you had somebody, if you chose sports, to look up to, a team of women to look up to that would defeat all odds, that would define all odds, that would come dead last, and nine months later, step on a podium and win this. Yeah, it's kind of cool, eh? And this is a pretty cool object. I don't always walk around with it. But I'll tell you what. If you guys watched that Olympics in uh, London, we lost to our best friends, the Americans. I say best friends because Canada USA is a huge rivalry. And I'll never forget this. Because if you're a soccer player, you've heard, who here has heard of Manchester United? OK, a couple of you guys, good. So I'm relating to you guys. OK, so imagine growing up, right? Every Saturday watching Man U, being like, holy, one day I want to go to that field and watch a game. And here you are, semifinals of the Olympic Games. You're playing your rivalries. You're playing the Americans. You're playing in a stadium you hope to just one day watch a game in. You're walking through Old Trafford, and there are your heroes on the wall as you're walking. You're like, man, that 15 minutes more is pretty cool. And you play against Americans who always beat you. They're the bigger brothers. They're always beating you. And you go ahead. And if you watch on TV, you see the highlights of Christine Sinclair scoring a goal. But what you don't see is on the sideline, we're like, yeah! And their coach is like, yeah! And it's just like intense. And you go ahead, and then they go ahead, and then you go ahead. And then a referee makes a call. And you're like, what? And your dreams are gone. And you're broken again because you feel like you did nine months before where you've let these people that you want to inspire down. And the truth is, do you know what got our team back? You guys. We remembered why we were doing this. We got on the podium and we came home and life changed again. I'm telling you this story because I want you to understand that look at me, I am living proof that first of all, you gotta dream big. You gotta dare to dream crazy big. Not what all your friends and all those people who tell you like, oh, this is your, yeah. no, inside yourself. You gotta dream big. You gotta believe in yourself. You gotta learn, you gotta become in a way positively obsessed with something. You gotta be vision clear in where you wanna go. And then you gotta make sure you don't listen to those who tell you that you can't do it. Because this, it's my Olympic medal. But here today, you're gonna hear from speakers who it will be their Olympic medal. At age 13, he's already dreamed big. You're gonna hear from speakers who will sit here and tell you, you know what, this entire technology needs you. They need you to dare to dream big. They need you to dare to give that 15 minutes more. They need you to believe in yourself. They need you to not listen to everybody else who tells you, no, you can't do it. And they need you to understand that it's not going to be perfect and easy. I had doctors who told me three different times in my career, my career was done. I just went to a different doctor. I had moments where two days before a World Cup, I got injured. Two days. You fall to the ground, the pain of the injury just pales in comparison to the fact that you know that you're not going to play in that World Cup and you have to figure out a way to let the ego go at the door because you know what? This is another step in the journey. Because I'll tell you what, standing on the podium, having this around my neck, standing next to my best friends, crying the ugliest cry, which I wish somebody would have said cry gracefully, 
Because there's life-size posters in good old Maple Ridge with me like this. <laughs> but on that moment, those tears aren't for winning the medal. Those tears are about the journey. Those tears are about what you overcame, because I'll tell you something. Beyond all of my greatest failures were my greatest successes. I dare you to fail greatly. I dare you. I don't say, hey. And it's not about being like, don't, you can't live in fear of failure because you won't even know your potential. You got to embrace it. Because the people who hit fear and say, whoa, that's not for me, we talked about it before, they're choosing to be average. None of us were put on this world to be average. It's true. But you've got to dare to dream big. Like, I mean, big. <laughs>